Hi everyone, this session is on decimation in time and decimation in frequency. What is the meaning of decimation? Decimation as per dictionary, it is destruction of a bigger group into smaller pieces, into smaller pieces. So uh, we, are, we are now going to look at decimation in time and decimation in frequency. The outline of this presentation is going to be like this. Introduction to Fast Fourier Transform, which is the abbreviation of uh, VFFT. Next followed by Decimation in Time, DIT. And Decimation in Frequency is abbreviated as DIF. The differences and similarities between this DIT and DIF, this is what we are going to see in the outline of this presentation. So the first one is, what is Fourier transform? A Fourier transform is a useful analytical tool that is important for many fields of application in the digital signal processing. In describing the properties of the Fourier transform and inverse Fourier transform, it is quite convenient to use the concept of time and frequency. In image processing applications, it plays a critical role. Fast Fourier transform was first proposed by Kule and Tuki in 1965. This fast Fourier transform is a highly efficient procedure for computing the discrete Fourier transform that is DFT of a finite series and it requires lesser number of computations than that of a direct evaluation of DFT. So that is actually the main aim of fast Fourier transform. This FFT is based on decomposition and breaking the transform into smaller transforms and combining them to get the total transform. So this is what I told you. As per the meaning, we are now going to decompose a bigger sequence into smaller sequence and we are going to apply the transforms. After doing all the processing, we are going to combine them to get the total transform. Yes. So this is discrete Fourier transform. Hope you are all familiar with what is discrete Fourier transform. The transform which helps us to convert this time domain to frequency domain. Now you, have, you will have a question in your mind. What is this time domain? What is this frequency domain? Time domain is uh, an information represented by a signal can be obtained at any instance of time. That is, the signal information can be obtained at any instance of time. That is time domain. But we are not able to calculate the rate at which the information is varying, the rate at which the signal is varying. So in order to calculate the rate at which the signal is varying, we are moving on to the frequency transformation. Probably the previous uh, topics of this unit will give you a better explanation of why people have transformed from time domain to frequency domain. Now ultimately coming to our topic, the uh, main aim of discrete Fourier transform is to convert a time domain sequence into a frequency domain sequence. Right? So what is the formula for DFT? x of k, this is actually the frequency domain uh, uh, output, x of k is equal to the summation of n is equal to 0 to n minus 1 x of n into e to the power of minus j 2 pi by capital N k into k n. So where n is the total number of sequence, and n takes, smaller n takes the values from 0 to n minus 1, right? So, uh, how can I calculate the inverse? Is there a possibility to convert frequency domain to uh, time domain? Yes, it is possible using discrete Fourier transform. We call that as inverse transform. So, while applying inverse, we are supposed to get x of n, right? That is what we gave in the previous case. So, x of n is equal to 1 divided by n 
the summation of k is equal to 0 to n minus 1. Because the parameter that we have used for a frequency domain here is k. So, summation of k is equal to 0 to n minus 1 x of capital K, here we have used minus j, instead you use a plus j, e to the power of j, 2 pi by capital N into Kn. So, these two are called as Fourier transform pairs because we can convert a time domain signal into a frequency domain signal as uh, and vice versa as well. So, this is actually the baseline for, uh, I mean, this is actually the uh, Fourier transform pairs explanation, right. What is the baseline for computational complexity? What does mean by complexity? See, more the number of operations, your, uh, uh, your operation or uh, the computational speed or the rate becomes complicated, right. So, in DFT, uh, each DFT coefficient requires, so how many uh, number of computations are carried out when I am using this DFT. So, DFT uh, carries, uh, carries out n complex multiplications and n minus number of complex additions. So, this is the case for DFT. So, it is executing n complex multiplications and n minus 1 complex addition. So, this is the case for a coefficient. Now, what will be the case for, for all n DFT coefficients, how many computations we require? It requires n squared complex multiplications and n into n minus 1 complex additions. Do remember this, don't forget. n squared complex multiplications and n into n minus 1 complex additions. Yeah. Now, what is the necessity for this fast Fourier transform? Ma'am, you have told already uh, time domain sequence has to be converted to frequency domain and there is no issues and we were able to convert it using a discrete Fourier transform. Then what is this for FFT? Yes, this fast Fourier transform is an algorithm used to compute the DFT. Already time domain sequence has been converted to frequency domain and vice versa as well. Now, this fast Fourier transform is an algorithm used to reduce the number of computations that have been occupied or that have been uh, used for DFT calculations. So, how is it possible? It is making use of the symmetry and periodicity properties of Twiddle factor. Twiddle factor is Wn. So, this is actually a coefficient. It is a trigonometric constant coefficient which can be multiplied by all the uh, all the various uh, operations that we require for the processing to effectively reduce the DFT computation time. So, ultimately what is the uh, aim? We are trying to reduce the n squared complex multiplications and n into n minus 1 complex additions, right? So, it is based on the, how, how come it is possible? It is based on the fundamental principle of decomposing the computation of DFT of a sequence of length n into successively smaller DFT. So, this can be obtained only by decomposing the structure into smaller DFT. So, how is it possible? Yes. So, we already, uh, as said already, it is done by using symmetry and periodicity. So, what is symmetry? Wn. What is this Wn? Wn is, is a factor called e to the power of minus j 2 pi divided by capital N. N is the total number of sequences, total number of uh, digital in, uh, discrete inputs present in the sequence, capital N. Uh, Wn to the power of Kn star is equal to Wn to the power of minus Kn. Probably you would have gone through this properties already. What is periodicity? Periodicity is uh, Wn to the power of Kn is equal to Wn to the power of K 
of n plus capital n so you even after the sequence is added with the n number of samples it will remain the same it will it will give us the same sequence that is periodicity so which can also be written as w n to the power of k plus capital n into n so this is also possible by using periodicity one more possibility is w n to the power of minus k n is equal to w n to the power of k of capital n minus n which is equal to w n to the power of small n into n minus k so these are the properties of periodicity similarly uh, there are some other uh, twiddle factor parameters also which is uh, uh, which is satisfying the uh, periodicity properties like w n to the power of n k can be written as it is equal to w uh, n to the power of n k multiplied by m on uh, both the scripts w capital n to the power of n k can be written as w n to the power of small n k by m that is divided by m on both the superscript and subscript w n to the power of n by 2 i told you already what is w uh, suffix capital n w suffix capital n can be represented as e to the power of minus j 2 pi by n e to the power of minus j 2 pi by n so 2 pi by n into n by 2 because we have capital n by 2 in the super superscript so while multiplying that n and n will get cancelled 2 and 2 will get cancelled we will get e to the power of minus j pi what is e to the power of minus j pi what is the trigonometric representation we can write it as cos pi minus j sin pi am i right so what is cos pi cos pi is minus 1 sin pi is 0 so this is the twiddle factor of w n to the power of n by 2 can be written as minus 1 w n to the power of k plus n by 2 uh, in a similar way of calculation do remember w n takes the value e to the power of minus j 2 pi divided by capital n so substitute in that you get minus w n to the power of k so this is how we calculate the periodicity and we are using these two as the key properties to reduce the number of computations in dft which forms our fast fourier transform yes so the fast fourier transform algorithm provides speed increase factors when compared with the direct computation of the dft of approximately uh, let's say 64 and 205 for a 256 point and 1024 point transforms respectively so it is drastically reducing the number of computations required so the number of multiplications and additions required to compute an endpoint dft using radix2 algorithm fft or uh, it can be calculated by using the formula n ca n capital n log to the base 2 n and n by 2 log to the base 2 n respectively so this is the number of multiplications and this is the number of complex additions that that is taken by this fft which uh, reduces the uh, numbers very drastically yes so the example for uh, uh, the reduction in the multiplication and uh, uh, multiplication and addition using this FFT and direct computation is given as follows. The number of mul complex multiplications required using direct computation is uh, n squared is equal to 64 square which is equal to uh, uh, 4096. The number of complex multiplications required using FFT is so that this is actually calculated for a n equal to 64 point DFT. So when when FFT is considered for the same n equal to 64 point, so how much is the uh, number of complex multiplications getting reduced? See, it is actually uh, 192, a very lesser value. You can look at the speed improvement factor, which is equal to 4096 divided by 192, which is marvelous, right? So 21.33. So these many number of computations are reduced which means the speed is increased 
so what are uh, what are fft algorithms are do we have any algorithms to perform this computations yes basically it is classified into two types one is decimation in time and the other one is decimation in frequency first we are going to look at what is decimation in time algorithm so decimation in time algorithm so a key hint i'm going to give you uh, in time time is what is the parameter that we are uh, using uh, for uh, representing time in dft n smaller n represents the time domain k represents the frequency domain so if n is getting decimated we call it as decimation in time if k is getting decimated we call that transform uh, we call that algorithm as decimation in frequency so in dit algorithm uh, um, dit algorithm is used to calculate the dft of an n point sequence the idea here is to break the n point sequence as i told you decimation is breaking a larger sequence into smaller sequence so n point capital n point sequence is broken into two uh, two uh, two sequences where the length of the sequence will now become n by 2 point sequences how are we going to split so that is actually the uh, uh, major part so now in dit we are going to split the sequences into even sequence and odd sequence that is represented as smaller x e of n e represents even and o x not of n o represents odd numbers so yeah the sequence is now split into even and now now there are two n point two dfts formed n by 2 dfts of these two sequences are evaluated and combined together to give the two point dft similarly this n point n by 2 d n point n by 2 point dfts can be expressed as a combination of once again there can be a split up right so once again i can divide it into n by 4 point dfts ultimate aim is you can divide n uh, you can divide it into smaller groups and reach towards the shorter smallest group once again combine it back to form the n point sequence so this process is continued until we are left with the two point dft because we are going to propose a structure for radix two point dft right so this algorithm is actually called as decimation in time because as i told you already x of n is often split into smaller sequences so how can i decide how, on what basis we can decide the length or number of decimations that it has to perform so there are different radixes we have in algorithm it starts from radix 2 radix 3 and radix 4 uh, now in our syllabus we are going to see only radix 2 algorithm so radix 2 as told already the length of the sequence is capital n and we are representing an integer called as l so capital n is equal to the length of the sequence is represented as 2 to the power of uh, the uh, 2 to the power of l where l should be an integer value so to decompose an n point time domain signal into capital n signals each containing a single point each decomposing stage uses an interlace decomposition separating the even and odd indexed samples to calculate the capital n frequency spectra corresponding to these capital n time domain signals so this is a, a diagrammatic representation of how the split up is going to look like so this diagram actually says a 16 point dft so if i'm having 16 point signals uh, how can it be split as i told you already dit has to be split into even and odd sequences so while splitting you are taking out the even numbers and odd numbers separately so this will become 28.8 point signals and once again if you are splitting as told already or as mentioned already we have to go till two point uh, sequence so once again split up so uh, in all these cases you can see it is only even and odd so this side it is even and this side it is odd 
so uh, we are splitting it until uh, it becomes one point sequence one point sequence is actually mm, uh, the, with the diagram which we are going to uh, use in general is a two point dft so this is actually the starting point of the uh, fft calculation so this is how it is looking like yes what is the algorithm probably this algorithm will be explained you in a detailed manner and uh, by another uh, 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 by another video uh, now i am just going to brief you what are the steps that we are using in radix2 dit fft algorithm so ultimate aim is to divide the sequence into two that two in dit it is going to get divided into even and odd sequences right and i told you already n is going to get divided n is going to get decimated right so uh, when you are saying that it has to be split into even and odd sequence uh, how can i split it into even and odd sequence it can be uh, two uh, two uh, two n see look at this 2n uh, on 2n plus 1 uh, see uh, do you should remember that any number of variables in the place of n can be used but whichever is the variable used it is representing only the time domain variable n so here we are in order to avoid the confusion we have we have taken r r is nothing but the same n so what are the possibilities it can be an even value or an odd value is it not so when we are saying it is an even value x of 2r which is nothing but the same x of 2n do remember that r is your n whereas for or for getting odd values x2 of r is equal to x of uh, 2r plus 1 2n plus 1 well what is the value of r r takes the value it is half right so r is equal to 0 to n by 2 minus 1 whereas what is the value of n actually for dft it is 0 to n minus 1 0 to capital n minus 1 so how are we going to calculate this um, we already know the formula for dft for obtaining x1 of k use the dft formula so now the limits are r is equal to 0 to n by 2 minus 1 x1 of r into w n by 2 to the power of r k uh, similarly write it for x2 of k whereas we know already x1 of r is an even sequence x of 2 r and x2 of r is a even odd sequence x of 2 r plus 1 so replacing that now what is the value of k there are two different variables right one is uh, r and the other one is k k you should write till the end of the algorithm so k takes the when n takes the value 0 to n by 2 minus 1 k will also take the same value 0 to n by 2 minus 1 right so this is uh, or, or even and odd split up about um, a sequence which is in the uh, half portion so the next half can be calculated by using the periodicity property so x of k plus n by 2 can be represented as x1 of k plus n by 2 the same sequence in the next half w n to the power of k plus n by 2 into x2 of k plus n by 2 right so w n to the power of k is a constant which can be written w n to the power of n by 2 we already saw in that previous slide right uh, i already told you w n takes the value e to the power of minus j 2 pi by n minus j 2 pi by n in that n by 2 gets cancelled we will get e to the power of minus j pi which is cos pi minus j sin pi cos pi is equal to minus 1 so this minus 1 is actually carried out and it is placed here so this is actually obtained by because of the periodicity property so now it takes the value k equal to 0 1 n by 2 minus 1 yes so now what has happened till now x of n has been split into two sequences x1 of r and x2 of r uh, which can be taken as even and odd and that was transformed as x1 of k and x2 of k ultimately at last what are we doing we are combining both to get the same x of k so this is actually called as decimation
we are going to draw the same and represent the same by using as an easiest structure which is the magic of fft by using a flow graph called as butterfly structure or butterfly flow graph x of k is equal to x1 of k plus w n to the power of k x2 of k so these two are for the lengths half half lengths right uh, so x of k plus n by 2 is the next half of the equation now how can we uh, draw a, a two point dft sequence let's say the two inputs are x1 of k x2 of k when i'm drawing see it has to be a cross line like this this r mark represents uh, it is multiplied by a unit value so uh, draw the uh, draw the node points so that you are not uh, uh, deviating from it so the arrow representation is like this uh, follow my follow my pointer path so it is going like this and for this input it goes like this and this so for computation the input goes directly like this and a split input goes like this here this operation is direct goes like this and this operation is like this and here in this line it is multiplied by minus 1 why is it getting multiplied by minus 1 you can look at this there is a minus 1 present in the uh, present in the uh, transformation so we are multiplying it by minus 1 what is the twiddle factor that we are going to multiply w n to the power of k so how what is the output of this sequence this this is actually combining both complex multiplication and additions so how how is it happening let us see so this variable directly goes first which is x1 of k right uh, the next next variable comes like this the next one is x2 of k which is multiplied by the twiddle factor w n to the power of k and it is multiplied by once again one i told you already this r mark represents unit signal so multiply it simply by one what do you get x1 of k plus w n to the power of x2 of k right similarly look at the uh, look at the output uh, at the other point so first one is once uh, again and again you bring the first variable first so what is the first variable x1 of k so x1 of k comes directly there is no other factor here so it is simply multiplied by 1 it is x1 of k minus uh, why why do we get minus first listen here so it this input has to go as the next uh, parameter right so x2 of k multiplied by w n to the power of k and then it is multiplied by minus 1 that is how you get this variable or you get this parameter x1 of k minus w n to the power of k x2 of k so this is how it has to be followed multiplied the input parameter with the twiddle factor first and then multiply it by minus 1 so this is how we are computing the two point two point dft sequence in an fft so how many number of multiplications and uh, complex additions are there in a two point there is only one complex multiplication and two complex additions in a two point dft so this is how it is proportionately increasing for the number points so uh, this is actually a block diagram representation of an n point dft uh, uh, now i'll 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 tell you why do we uh, or how is it actually uh, divided into uh, an even sequence and an odd sequence so we have already seen it has been divided into x1 of r into x2 of r Uh, this is your even sequence what are the even numbers we have 0 2 4 6 odd numbers 1 3 5 7 so these two are see this this is now split into two uh, two n by 2 point dfts right so n length has been split up into two n by 2 point dfts so this four combines an uh, even sequence then this four combines the odd sequence right so when this is going to the output we get all the eight in, eight outputs 
before multiply before going to the outputs it has to be multiplied by the twiddle factors so what are the twiddle factors that we have to multiply as seen already it has to be multiplied by w n to the power of k as seen uh, already all second lines has to be multiplied by the twiddle factor w n to the power of k now here k takes the value 0 1 2 3 because k ranges from 0 to n by 2 minus 1 right so it takes the value 0 1 2 and 3 Uh, we are multiplying by the twiddle factors uh, consider all the n by 2 point as second line so all these lines has to be multiplied by minus 1 see look at the second four lines you consider this first four lines as a single line in a dft two point dft whereas the second set of two uh, second set of four lines as the second line in the uh, two point dft so all these lines has to be multiplied by minus 1 yes so this is uh, 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 this is a flow chart representation uh, how like how we need to how, like how we can synthesize or how combine a, uh, dft in radix 2 2. Point, uh, radix 2 dit fft so first step is we are combining two two uh, two point dfts into four segments like this and for this two point and this two point are combined together to form a uh, four point dft that is synthesize the two two point dfts into a four point dft this is becoming an odd even sequence and this is an odd sequence and all these eight inputs to form a uh, synthesize to form the four point dfts into an eight point so this four two four points will make a Eight point DFT. So, how many stages of uh, synthesis uh, synthesis are? How many stages of decomposition are there for an eight point DFT? You can look at the capital N is equal to two to the power of three, where three is an integer, a real value. Hmm? Uh, so, uh, two to the power of three is two into two into two. It is eight. So, n equal to eight can be synthesized by three stages of decimation. So, that is what is. Uh, shown in this picture so at the end of this computation flow graph at any stage the output variables can be stored in the same registers previously occupied by the corresponding input variables so this is actually the most uh, special point that has to be described in an fft which is called as in place computation in place computation in the sense uh we took two variables right x1 of k and x2 of k in uh, a two point dft so that two variables were calculated into two different outputs what are those two different outputs x1 of k plus w n to the power of k into x2 of k and x2 x1 of k min x1 of k minus w n to the power of k into x2 of k so these two were the outputs right as uh, as soon as these two outputs are calculated we we don't require the two inputs right x1 of k and x2 of k are no more required so the output values which are calculated can be stored in the same memory location as stored earlier that is what the sentence says now now just uh, read the, i'm reading the sentence once again just follow me at the end of the computation flow graph at any stage so on any stage the output variables can be stored in the same register previously occupied by the corresponding input variables so if i'm filling the outputs that are obtained in each stage in the previous uh, input location this is uh, uh, this is actually called as in place computation and this in place computation is actually at memory location sharing so this is how it is re reducing the uh, significant requirements of memory that is occupied in dft so uh, in place computation you should never forget in place computation 
so the distance between the two nodes in a butterfly structure that is n equal to 2 to the power of l there are l stages so how many stages we have depending upon the l value so uh, if uh, if it is 1 it is 1 uh, the stage 2 is 2 that is l value is 2 it is 2 it is 3 uh, the number of uh, distance is 4 and l is equal to 2 to the power of l minus 1 so this are the distance between the nodes uh row right, right how to calculate this mom when it comes to a problem how well, how can we consider this Uh, uh how can we consider this uh, bit reversal or how can we consider this even and odd sequences now we are going to follow an order called as bit reversed order in the dft computation scheme the dft samples x of k appears at the output in a sequential order while the input samples x of n appear in a different order called bit reversed and bit reversed order so what is this bit reversed order now look at this picture probably this will give you a clear explanation i told you dt uh, is decimation in time that is n is going to be split into even and odd sequences is it not so uh, let's say m is actually the sequential binary form and n is the bit reversed form look at this Uh, uh normally for n equal to 8 point we know what are the uh, binary forms we need what are the binary combinations possible it starts from 0 0 0 0 0 1 2 3 up to 7 we have 1 1 1 now reverse the entire sequences uh, independently so 0 0 0 the next one is 1 0 0 reverse the sequence so what will you get after reversing look at the sequence it is 0 4 i am telling you the decimal equivalence it is 0 4 2 6 1 5 3 7 so these are the uh, the representation of binary forms which we are popularly calling it as bit reversed order so the input in the dat radix 2 algorithm is in bit reversed order whereas the output that we are going to get that is x of k will be in normal order so how is it actually getting decimated this is actually a an evidence for your input uh, you know bit reversed sequence so there are three binary values n2 n1 n0 how is it actually uh, split 0 and 1 and this 0 and 1 zero can be split into 0 and 1 this can be split into 0 and 1 now look at the sequence so this can be written as 0 0 0 this is 1 0 0 then next one is 0 1 0 the next one is 1 1 0 this is looking back just look at look at the back and the next one is 0 0 1 the next 1 0 1 next one is 0 1 1 the last one is 1 1 1 so this is how we are forming the bit reversed sequence as we did earlier this is one more method of representation so uh, uh, make it for sure in your mind that in dit the input is in bit reversed or yeah so that's it for dit algorithm the next comes is your decimation in frequency algorithm so it is as simple as possible uh we are going to now I, as i told you already frequency is the parameter that we are going to decimate here is k now it is a popular form of fft algorithm in this the output sequence x of k is divided into smaller and smaller subsequences that is why the name decimation in frequency so this is what i told k is going to get divided smaller and smaller initially the input sequence x of n is divided into two sequences x1 of n and x2 of n first consisting of n by 2 samples of x of n and the last consists of n by 2 samples of x of n effectively so uh, uh, have a very simple note it is going to split it into uh, two halves 
So whatever is the point endpoint algorithm given to you, whatever is the endpoint sequence given to you, is split it into halves. That is, zero to n by two minus one will be the first half of the sequence, and n by two to uh, n minus one will be the second half of the sequence. That is, no even and odd sort of thing. It is simply uh, half half sequences divided. So that is what we are trying to say. The former n by two n by n by two point is x of n, and later n by two point is x of n plus n n by two. There k uh, there we saw uh, n getting decimated. Here we are going to look at k getting decimated. So this is how the structure looks like. Uh, if I'm taking an n equal to eight point sequence, so it is divided into two halves. Zero, one, two, three will form the first n by two point, and uh, four, five, six will form the next n by two point. So look at the arrow marks. This is how the butterfly computation works. So this is taken now as a four point, and this is taken now as a four point. So once again, what will we do? We are going to split it into two halves. Same thing. N by two point, n by four, and this is n by four. This is one n by four, and this is one n by four. So finally, uh, the same thing comes to uh, one point. So what happens here is the input is now taken. What is the case in DIT? Uh, the input is taken in bit reversed order. The output was in normal order. Is it not? Output was in normal order. Uh, probably I missed the point. Eh? Uh, no, I'm showing it once again. So this is uh, uh, zero to uh, zero to seven. That is n equal to eight. So this is in split into two halves, and this is now split into two halves. So the last sequence is in bit reversed order. So here the input sequence is in normal order. Output sequence is in bit reversed order. So this is actually the uh, vice versa thing that we are going to follow while calculating the problems. Except for this, this is the most important expected 16 mark question of this unit, and this is very very easy. In fact, if you follow the very simple procedure. Yes. So uh, this is a gist of the algorithm. Where algorithm will be coming in a, a different video. So x of k can now be x of k. This is actually the uh, actual formula for DFT. X of k is equal to the summation of n equal to zero to n minus one. X of n into W n to the power of n k, which is equal to. Now I told you it is divided it into two halves. So first half is zero to n by two minus one. The next half is n by two to n minus one. So if this is the case, how will be the uh, symmetry and periodicity working? So this first half, I can change it to the same limit. So in order to bring it to the same limits, this is also one same half, right? So I can simply change this limits also as zero to n by two minus one because the length of the sequence is the same. So while making this, what I am supposed to do here in order to bring n equal to zero, I should add wherever n is there in this, the smaller n has to be added by n by two. So that is what we are doing. See, n plus n by two, n plus n by two. Once again. Calculate the, uh, the periodicity property as told already. It is becoming minus one to the power of k. K equal to zero to n minus one. So this is how k is getting decimated. So this is uh, just showing you the first stage of decimation. Probably in the algorithm you detailed look. So now this is actually the x of k sequence, which is split into two halves. Now we have to think. While getting decimated, it is obviously going to get divided into odd and even sequence, right? So in that x of k, what is the even sequence? What is the odd sequence? So now you should be very careful in looking at the algorithm. There, n get n got decimated. Here, k is getting decimated. So now here, this two r represents the value of k. Look at this. There I told you uh, n is taking the value 2r and 2r plus 1. Here we have to be very careful. It is k taking the value 2r and 2r plus 1, right? So the same thing. Uh, instead of uh, instead of k, we are using 2r, and instead of k, um, uh, k we are using 2r plus 1. So two different sequences. Apply that in the form.
we'll get the uh, uh, we have to work on the algorithm and we'll get the sequence so this is actually the uh, two point so this is the butterfly structure that we are going to use for DIF calculation. What are the two different inputs here? X of n and X of n plus n by 2. Now how? Uh, see, look at the node points. Look at the diagram. There we had a twiddle factor before the uh, second uh, variable before this before it is getting multiplied by minus one. Whereas Whereas the operation is totally different here. Look at the sequence. So again, same uh, four node points in order to uh, draw it neatly and then drop the arrows. Once again, this input has to go one input directly, one input this way. Uh, once again, this input, one input directly and the other input has to go in this way. Uh, this arrow represents multiplied by 1. That's it. Now, what is the output uh, x1 of n and x2 of n are supposed to be my outputs, let's say. In that case, uh, what is getting added? So, the, the, one, the first input goes directly. So, into 1 x of n. Hope you understand. One more input is coming from this end. This is, that is next variable x of n plus n by 2. So x of n plus n by 2 into 1 hmm, uh, comes to plus x of n plus n by 2. Similarly, look at the value variable of x2 of n. Uh, uh, how do we get this structure? Now, this is actually the standard structure uh, which has been framed already by Kule uh, and Tuke. So, uh, this is multiplied by minus 1. Here, the twiddle factor is w n to the power of n. There in dit, we had w n to the power of k. So, just note it very seriously. So now what is x2 of n? As usual, drop the first variable. x of n into 1 into w n to the power of n. Right? Into w n to the power of n. So this becomes a common because it is going to be multiplied. The twiddle factor is a common variable for both the inputs x of n and x of n plus n by 2. So be careful in that. The next variable is x of n plus n by 2 into minus 1, the whole thing into w n of n, right? So, this w n of n is common for both. So, I am putting it in the uh, outer uh, and including this x of n minus x of n plus n by 2 in a square parenthesis, square bracket. Uh, so, how many number of uh, uh, computations are required for calculating a DIF? One complex multiplication and two complex additions. So, this is how the block diagram looks. I told you already, it is uh, the input has to be taken in the normal order. The output has to be uh, taken in the bit reversed order. But this is not the exact output. It is uh, actually the first stage when it is converting it into n by 2 point, uh, sorry, second stage output is shown here, n by 2 point DFT and n by 2 point DFT. So, here the twiddle factors are, uh, uh, in DIT what we used to do, the twiddle factors were multiplied before the, uh, before uh, getting into this butterfly, whereas here the butterfly um, uh, only after the butterfly structure is over, we are multiplying it by the twiddle factors. Once again, the va value of n is uh, taking the value 0, 1, 2, 3. So, this is the only difference between your uh, DIT and DIF. So, this is actually showing you a butterfly uh, uh, which is uh, uh, fluttering, its with, uh, fluttering its wings, right? So, contracting and uh, relaxing its wings. So, this is actually a sample diagram which we are going to look in the tutorials. You can now look at. So, this diagram you have to be there in your memory even during sleep you should uh, remember this. If you are remembering this then for sure 16 marks is there in your hand. Don't never forget it. So, uh, in DIT, sorry, DIF for n is equal to 8 point. How many? 8 point is 2 to the power of 3. How many stages? L is the number of stages as I told you already. So, L is first stage, second stage and third stage. 
so the input sequence is divided into two halves right so input is in input is in no, normal order output is in bit reversed order so first stage is like this uh, always do consider do uh, uh, have your two point structure in the mind first uh, first parameter with the input goes directly second parameter will be multiplied by my second line will be multiplied by minus 1 so all the second set of lines will be multiplied by minus 1 in dit we used to have a twiddle factor multiplied before whereas here we have a twiddle factor multiplied afterwards right so this is how it is split and this is a two point dft and finally uh, the output order we are obtaining is in bit reversed order but this is not actually the correct output uh, after getting the bit reversed order we are supposed to write what is the value of x of k while writing x of k you have to bring it to normal order and write only that will be k giving the correct sequence of data ma'am till now we you were explaining about dit and dif uh, whether uh, the you are you are telling about the same n point n equal to 8 point will it give the same answer for while i'm doing it in dit and dif yes it is give, it is going to give you the same answer either you do it in dit or dif so both are having the same output so both will uh, in both the different algorithms while you are processing you will get the same output for the uh, dft sequence so what is the comparison between dit and dif the order of the samples dit fft the input is bit reversed order and the output is natural order dif the input is in normal order natural order and output is in bit reversed order regarding the butterfly computation dit uh, will have will have multiplication done before addition whereas dif will have multiplication done after addition so these are the uh, comparison points between dit and dif so both dit and dif uh, fft have the identical computational complexity because they share the same uh, 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 number of decimations that is capital n is equal to 2 to the power of l there are l stages and each has n by 2 butterfly computation each butterfly computation has one right so both dit and dif have the characteristics of in place computation so that is the most important point uh, uh, in place computation in place computation is uh, do remember i take two input variables do the signal processing using the radix2 dit uh, uh, radix algorithm apply the algorithm and get the processed outputs now the processed outputs no more require the input from which it has been calculated so we can store this these outputs at any point of time in the decimation all these outputs can be stored in the same memory location uh, previously stored by the previous input parameters so this is called as in place computation a dit flow graph can be transposed to a dif fft flow graph and vice versa so thank you for this thank you for patiently listening this presentation thank you